Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to find the impulse from a force time graph. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that a stationary snooker ball of mass 0.2 kilograms is struck by a cue. The graph shows how the force varies during the time of contact of 40 milliseconds. So we've got our graph here of force against time and part A says to find the impulse. Well the first thing I want to point out is the units of our time down here. So watch out for this because it's in milliseconds rather than just in seconds. So we're going to need to take that into account when we're pulling numbers off the graph. So the first thing we need to do to find the impulse is to write down the impulse is equal to the area under the force time graph. And so if we look under the graph, we have this section here and this section here. So we've got two triangles split up by this dashed line. So that means we're gonna need to use the relationship for the area of a triangle. So this equals a half times base times height plus a half times base times height. And if we put in our numbers now for the two triangles, we have a half times 0 0.02, which is our 20 milliseconds there, times the 12, which is the height, plus a half times 0 0.02, another 20 milliseconds from there to there, times 12, again, the height there. So if you put that into your calculator, you should get 0.24 newton seconds. Part B says, what is the speed of the ball when it moves off? Well, we've just worked out the impulse, so we could use this relationship here, that impulse equals change in momentum. So we've got that 0.24 is equal to mv minus u. And so putting in some of the numbers for the right hand side, we have 0.24 equals 0.2 times v minus 0, because the object will be starting from rest. And we're trying to find what v is. So if we multiply out the brackets there, we get 0.2 v minus 0. And if we swap the sides, that'll give us 0.2 v equals 0.24. So dividing both sides now by 0.2 gives us V equals 1.2 meters per second. Question 2 says that a car travelling at 40 meters per second crashes. The driver, who is not wearing a seatbelt, collides with the steering wheel. The graph shows how the force acting on the driver varies with time. So we've got our force time graph here and part A says with what speed does the driver hit the steering wheel? Well first of all notice that we've got kilonewtons for our force and we've got milliseconds for our time. So we need to take those two into account when we're taking numbers from the graph. So for part A, with what speed does the driver hit the steering wheel? Well by Newton's first law, the driver will continue to move at 40 meters per second after the crash, so we'll hit the wheel at 40 meters per second. Part B says to find the impact impulse acting on the driver. So the impulse, remember, is equal to the area under the force time graph. And in this case, remember, it's the area under this entire thing. So even though the line stops there, we need to take into account the whole area under that graph. So we can split this into two, a rectangle and a triangle. So we're going to have our half times base times height plus our length times breadth. So putting in our numbers from the graph, we have a half times 25 times 10 to the minus 3, that was our 25 milliseconds for the triangle base, times the height of the triangle, which was 3 kilonewtons, which is 3 times 10 to the 3 newtons, plus our length times breadth from the rectangle, so we have our 25 milliseconds, 25 times 10 to the minus 3, times 2 times 10 to the 3, which was the height of the rectangle, which was 2 kilonewtons. So putting that into your calculator, we should get 87.5 newton seconds. Lastly, part C says to explain why cars have airbags fitted to the steering wheel which inflate during a collision. Well, remember from the theory we talked about this, and we can say that the airbag increases the time over which the force acts on the driver. As change of momentum is constant, then by the equation Ft equals mv minus mu, or mv minus u, if you were using brackets, as T increases, the average force acting on the driver is reduced. So because the right hand side of the equation stays the same, and we're saying that the time over which the force acts increases due to someone hitting the airbag, then the average force acting on the driver must be reduced. And this is going to decrease the risk of injury. The last question, question 3, says that during a hockey match, a penalty is given for a ridiculous foul. A player gets a free hit at a stationary ball. Part A says to sketch a graph showing how the force exerted by the stick on the ball varies with time during the impact. No numerical values are required. So we're going to have a force time graph here, so if we draw our axis first of all and then our labels, so we've got force in newtons on the y-axis, we've got our origin down here and we've got our time in seconds on the x-axis. And because the hockey stick is going to strike the hard ball, then it's going to be a large average force over a quite a short time. So we're going to draw it like this, and we're going to label it hard ball which was part A. Part B then says the ball is replaced by a second ball with the same mass and dimensions as the first ball. However, the material of the second ball is softer. On your graph for part A, sketch how the force exerted on this second ball varies with time. 
label each sketch clearly. So we've already labeled the one for part A there quite clearly. And if we're using a softer ball, we should expect a smaller average force over a longer time. So there's our smaller average force over a longer period of time. And remember when we're looking at a graph like this, we can say the impulse is the same for each ball, the hard ball and the soft ball, because the force multiplied by the time in each case would give you the same answer. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.